Thank you very much, Chair. Ambassador Rakesh Sood, uh, uh, Ambassador Gupta, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in Delhi here, and what a great honor to, to listen uh, to Indian Prime Minister this morning, uh, a man, uh, you know, whose illustrious international career and his idea that he led India, as well as his vision that we heard this morning. And I'd like to make a comment that he began this morning by saying something which struck me, if I got my notes correctly, to bring an end to the Cold War thinking and his suggestion to, to develop a multilateral framework leading towards a nuclear weapons convention. I think, I think that was a very major statement that I've heard from a leader of such stature uh, coming about. And I would, I would really look forward to it that, you know, uh, Ambassador Sood especially, you know, that this should be translated into an, into an operational idea going forward. This is not just an idea given here, which it encompasses a lot of discussion. Yeah, and and it's it's a it's a major mood point that he has suggested, uh, which which actually brings the the context of uh, uh, the discussion that we are having uh, here today. Uh, I like to state here that I am a disclaimer that I am not representing any government, United States or Pakistan, or views are my own here. Uh, one point that, uh, you know, <coughs> when you were the last speaker of the panel, the brilliant points are already done, you know. So, I mean, it's like I have to pick up from uh, what uh, Patricia said just a uh, while uh, back, that the risks is actually the probability times uh, the consequences. And because, and, and these, these mathematical equations we teach our students, you know, I talk about something else in my classrooms about deterrence. And this morning I had this panel, deterrence is, is actually capability times credibility. And this word times is a, is, a, is a huge problem here because if any of these variables become zero, then the end result is zero. That if the credibility is zero, no matter how much capability you develop, the end result is zero. But here, the, the, the equation that she gave it, uh, about the probability and consequences of, and this, to the, this was that she said in the context of proliferation, and I'm using that in this panel for nuclear terrorism, terrorism here. We know that the consequences here will never be zero. And I've heard Will Porter saying, so much is stolen by thunder. That's what happens when you live in Monterey. Uh, but the problem is that there's a probability variable that he himself defined in four phases. And I also had my four, four variables here that I wanted to bring here. But before I, I, I bring that, I think I'd like to qualify something else here that has been used, a term here, because I, I have to say something new. Um, NSA is being used, non-state actors is a term that has been used since morning. And I like to qualify this term because the real issue to look into is something called violent extremist organization, VEO. I think this term is being used in, in the United States in many statements that I heard. And I think it makes an important element here that it is not just the NSA, but it is a violent and extremist part. And that is an organization, it comes in an organized way which is important to, to determine why this issue is so important and not just to rack tag people just getting acquiring, acquiring capability. Um, this idea about nuclear and terrorism is, is, is a word that has, we know it for the last 15 years post 9-11. But actually this nature of threat has existed throughout the nuclear age and Robert Oppenheimer and others have said something to that effect in the earlier part uh, with loose nuke scenarios and backpacks stuff being been talked about. Uh, we contextualize in today because of the role of violent extremists and their interests that that has been uh, that is almost noted now and known. But there has not been a leadership debate. The United States has taken the debate, and I'm speaking in Delhi, and I like to see India taking this debate because one debate, 30, 40 years ago, India led that, and that was India identified something called nuclear apartheid. The haves and the have-nots were started here in the international forum. And I heard Prime Minister Singh this, saying this morning. One problem is that today there is intuitively, and I, since I live in the Western world, there is this idea that nuclear weapons belong to certain developed states and societies and that the have-nots should not have it because they're not developed people. They're not developed societies. And that was the proliferation debate. But what I come across is that those societies and states that are undergoing transformation and are very disturbed states and societies are the ones that are the focus of attention because arsenals are growing there. 
which is the, the sort of a thing that Ambassador Sharma, you and I confronted during the NTI index evolution of criteria development. We did our best, by the way, to, to bring uh, to context, but the numbers that India and Pakistan are is none of our credit or, or discredit, you know that. But the th fact is that we did. So, societal trends in our region cannot be the same as it is in Australia or many other settled areas in the world, and therefore that issue continues to remain and we have to come out with our own level. It cannot be as sophisticated as it was. Plus, there is some other element which actually harkens to a debate which was in the earlier panel this morning, uh, which some states consider acquisition of nuclear technology sent on to their national survivability. Uh, the psychological impact that they would not be able to survive without nuclear weapons. This goes back to the debate in the earlier panel. And therefore, their arsenals will continue to grow. And you can never beat the index because if arsenals are growing and societal trends continue to be bad, you just can't square the two together. But steps must be taken to, to, and to, to sift as to what is really and what is not there. Um, I also had four, uh, four um, uh, suggestions, but since uh, Bill has already said that, I simply want to quickly say that um, the, the first most, uh, in, in the order of probability or not probability, the fear of a theft of nuclear weapons is one of the uh, proper nuclear weapons by, by, by such violent extremist organizations. That's one scenario that comes to the mind. But the probability, the manner in which these states and where these trends are available, they protect them as crown jewels. There's much more highly unlikelihood for them to really take away, much less use it. And I'm not saying that this probability is zero, but it is much less because of a wide variety of reasons. That itself opens up another box about uh, the implication of weapons being out from safe storage into the battlefield is another issue. Theft of fissile material to fabricate and improvise nuclear device. I think Bill has already said that I won't say much. In my assessment, it's not that easy to really acquire and really have that amount of significant quantity, much less even really provide an improvised device. Nearly impossible to get an implosion device. And I do know that uh, Bill believes that highly enriched uranium, if, if I'm not wrong, is possible through gun method. The technicians and scientists I talk, they kind of dismiss that probability. But it was the third and the fourth one that you mentioned is much, much more. And I think I, I never thought about the danger that, Bill, you pointed out, about a state thinking on, on these terms. RDD is the most likely economic and psychological catastrophe. But then the question is, why is it not happen if it was that simple? This is for us to think about. And I think there's a fourth element which I would like to mention, which is more likely and more spectacularly happening in this part of the region which is a spectacular Mumbai type or Marriott Islamabad type attack on a nuclear facility that may or may not succeed, but it's going to create that drama and really create a hype in the region. And I think that is more, much more possible here in this region because we have seen these groups, these violent groups attacking military bases in Pakistan and they have done so in India as well at various places. And this is where the threat becomes much more regional, which brings me to the last part of my presentation as to what the region should do. I had intended to do, analyze the various tools, but uh, Roy, uh, um, he has done such a good job, you know, I won't go into this. Uh, so let's, let's begin the charity at home here. Let charity begin at home. Uh, some of my recommendations that I have gathered by here uh, from various track tools that I'm involved in and many of the people sitting in this room are also part of that and I'm sharing some of those that I share with them and some of them are, are my own. First of all, I think the word NNT, nuclear terrorism is the one, T is the most important factor which the regions in South Asia have so far been unable to resolve the problem. That is the root of the problem and therefore this issue, not just nuclear terrorism but broadly the word T itself requires the highest level of attention between the two countries and it should not be reduced to a lower level of bureaucratic discussions alone. Therefore, I suggest the Prime Minister and the military and heads, etc., must be engaged in the region to deal with these issues and other conceptual issues that we discussed earlier in the morning as well. This is very important. 
The second issue is about bilateral contacts between the scientific communities of India and Pakistan, specifically the Atomic Energy Commission chiefs and the two regulatory authorities, Master. Yes, Yes, so I got this. I think the third issue is the dedicated lines of communications that must be developed between officials of, between India and Pakistan for such things like nuclear emergency responses. How are the two countries developing? I just heard Rahul saying come up issues. There are many ideas that may be happening across the countries and maybe good ideas happening here in this country. It will be a great idea for India and Pakistani to be exchanging these ideas. Uh, fourth could be such as example could be sharing of radiation data around nuclear power plants. This may be more related to the safety issues, but that will be a tremendous CBN between the two countries and at some levels attract to this idea has been voted. And finally, I'll suggest uh, uh, one more uh, suggestion, the final one, which is that this is a great seminar and I'd like to see IDSA having seminars with the Institute of Strategic Studies Islamabad and scholars coming together discussing these things and exchanging these ideas. They should move beyond these small little things. So uh, these were my six uh, recommendations uh, regarding the, this particular issue and uh, I focused it more towards the regional side. Once again, I thank you all and I'd be happy to take questions.